are minimalists. Alicia writes in, I've changed to a job that makes me a lot happier, but a lot less pay. My family has had to make changes because of it. What are some changes one can make to make a change like this more sustainable? It's a lot of change. <laughs> right? Put that change in a jar. <laughs> <laughs> well, here, here's... I'll give you the pithy answer and then we'll talk about it a little bit because this is the biggest change I had to make in my own life. And I talked yeah. about it in everything that remains. Um, so my, my pithy answer is debt free is the new pay raise. Amen. And and that's the one thing to think about. Like if you have all of these debts, if you have student loan debt, if you have car debt, you know, you've got this car payment every month, you're paying for this oversized house. Maybe it's a mortgage. Maybe it's just a, a luxury condo or whatever. You're, you're paying a, a big payment over there. Maybe you're paying for the credit card debt that you have, yeah. or you're paying for, you know, the, 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 uh, all these other, um, bills that we have right debt payments yes they are just debt payments but debt free is the new pay raise because if you get rid of that debt you've automatically given yourself a pay raise so uh if you don't owe anybody anything mm -hmm. then you give yourself the freedom to do anything yeah dude you can tweet that too sean <laughs> it's funny because like I, I don't get it as often but I used to get it a lot when we first started The Minimalist. People would be like, oh, well, it's easy for you because, you know, you walked away from the corporate world and you obviously had, you know, uh, thousands and thousands of dollars saved up and, uh, you know, you're single and, you know, it's all these, like, these assumptions. Excuses, too. Yeah, excuses. And ultimately, I would just say to those people, like, no, 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 it's easy for me because I spend less money than what I make. Mm. And it's not, it's not about having thousands and thousands of dollars saved up. Certainly, it's, 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 it is a great idea to have a safety net and to save for retirement. I'm, I'm not trying to say that those things are important. But what I'm saying is, is ultimately, if you want to uh, have the freedom, if you want to be financially secure, you have got to start spending less money than what you make today. It's you okay to sacrifice your comfort as long as you're not sacrificing your values yes and i think that's one of the things we were spending money on all these like creature comforts mm -hmm. and and we're actually stepping all over our values and doing things that don't align with the person we want to become and yeah. by the way bravo to alicia here for stepping in that direction and yeah becoming the person she wants to be even if it means making a little bit less money or a lot less money in the process yeah congratulations alicia uh, my, my short answer is this. If we put money first, a meaningful life becomes the opportunity cost. So what I mean by that for, for Alicia is sometimes we might take this pay decrease so we can live a more meaningful life. And then once we take that pay decrease, we start to feel the, the pains or the discomfort, not pain, but maybe discomfort of those, those, uh, those comforts mm -hmm. that maybe we have to give up. Yeah. But the thing is, is to to really feel good about the decision that Alicia's made. She, she has to remind herself how she gave up that, you know, piece of her salary. She gave up the comforts. Yeah. So she could live a more meaningful life. A comfortable life is not a meaningful life. And here's how I look at it, man. Like when I, so I don't know, I made 150 or 175,000 bucks that year, that last uh, year I left um, the corporate world. Right. Did not have thousands of dollars saved up. Uh, had nothing to show for the salary that I was making for all those years. But what I'll say though, is that when the next year, when I made like 27,000 uh bucks, -huh. 28,000 bucks, I forget how much it was. I legitimately kind of had this conversation with myself like, man, like I made so much less money this year and I've never been happier. And like, I have never, I, I traveled more that year than I'd ever traveled. Uh, thanks to readers letting us stay on their floor and uh, yeah. you know, us sleeping in our car. I mean, it wasn't like we spent, you know, tens of thousands of dollars to, to go on that book tour, but but I, I would sit there and I, I, I sat there and I remember asking myself like, okay, um, I made a hundred and called one hundred fifty thousand dollars less or one hundred twenty five thousand dollars less than the previous year. Mm -hmm. Would I pay someone a hundred and if I had the money, mm -hmm. if I if I could afford it, mm -hmm. would I pay someone one hundred twenty five thousand dollars to relive that year? And I absolutely would have. And that's that's what it comes down to. So. Alicia, if you, if you ever start to feel the pain, mm. you've got to ask yourself, like, 
and when I say the pain, the pain of, of getting rid of those comforts, you got to ask yourself and say, okay, if I'm, if I'm making $10,000 less a year, you got to ask yourself, would I spend, or would I pay someone $10,000 if it would alleviate the stress of making that extra $10,000, yeah. if it would allow me to live a more meaningful life with my family, the answer is usually going to be yes. Yeah. If the answer is no, then yeah, do something, do something different. Um, you know, minimalism isn't about deprivation. It's not about uh, just living with as little as possible. It's about living intentionally. Yeah. And asking yourselves questions like that are going to help you live more intentional. Alicia, I'd love to send you a copy of our book, Essential. It's an essay collection. With 150 essays, 12 different chapters about 12 areas of intentional living. And uh, there's an entire chapter in here about finances, including the plan that you and I went through to make sure we got out of debt and more importantly, stayed out of debt once we got there. Mm-hmm. That's that's the like the important next step. But also investing in, in your future as well, even on a, uh, a smaller or much smaller income. So I hope you enjoy that copy of Essential. Sean, if you could reach out to her, give her the audio book, the book book or the ebook, whichever she'd like.